CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Our life, said Henry David Thoreau is frittered away by details. Simplify, simplify. And he did. He went off to live by himself in the woods where he could commune with the big picture. But those of us who are condemned to live our lives amidst the hustle and bustle and hurly-burly must needs pay strict attention to even the most insignificant seeming detail. Especially if we have murder in mind. Winona, I've never met anyone like you. I hope not. So soft, so sensitive, so kind. Thank you, my good sir, she said. Just think, it was my Aunt Sarah Jean who brought us together. Yes. We shall always be grateful to dear Aunt Sarah Jean. I wonder, hey, what, what can we do to thank her? How can we how can we thank her properly? Why, uh why don't we kill her? Our mystery drama, The Hundred Dollar Difference, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the twelve hour cold capsule and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I never knew the old man had so much blood in him, cried poor Lady Macbeth. Ah, yes, blood. While it may be thicker than water... It is thinner than, say, oil. Oil. That black, viscous, smelly slime that boils up from the very bowels of the earth. How could anything so ugly be so precious? Well, old Mrs. Sarah Jean Muffet owns thousands, maybe even millions, of barrels of it. Which is why we have a story. Good morning, Aunt Sarah Jean. Morning's about gone. Gone? Mm. Well, it, 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 it's hardly half past seven. By 7.30, your Uncle Marius and your daddy would have already done a half day's work. Oh. What have you done so far today? Ah. Uh, well, I intend to... You <clears throat> intend to what? Well, you see, Aunt Sarah Jean, <laughs> I, I'm still trying to find myself. Find yourself? What's the matter? You're lost? Well, no. I have yet to encounter my true vocation. Mm, I don't know. Your Uncle Marius wasn't shiftless. Neither was your daddy. Must come from your mother's side. Wealth has its responsibilities, Thaddeus. I'm fully aware of that, Aunt Sarah Jean. When I die, you'll be a rich man. Ah, oh, come on. You'll never die. <laughs> now, what kind of foolish thing is that to say? Man is born to die. Well, naturally, but... It's the design of the Lord. Yeah, of course. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes. When I die, you'll be a rich man. What will you do with all the money, that is? Oh, well, uh, I would... Fritter it away, I'm <clears throat> sure. Just fritter it away. And why shouldn't I? It's my money. Why don't I tell her that? Why don't I look right in her beady little eyes and tell her that? Why don't I say to her, Look here, you insufferable old hag. Once you're dead, why should you care? Yes, yes, I'll fritter it away. I'll spend it, squander it, lavish, exhaust it, drain it to the last penny. That's what I ought to say. And... Sarah Jean, I, I shall use the money wisely. When are you getting married? Uh, well, as yet, I haven't found anyone who... Why do you make it a problem? All you need is a sensible girl who's able to bear children. 
There are thousands of those around. Yeah, but even so... One's just as good as another. Well, that isn't the way that I hope... I want you married before the year is up. Suppose I can't find someone. I want to see what kind of grandchildren I'm going to have. But, Aunt Sarah Jean, it's a bit more complicated. Not really. I, I'll, I'll need some money. What for? Oh, I suppose you might call it, um, courting expenses. Your Uncle Marius took me out walking. It didn't cost a cent. Well, girls today are different. Find one who isn't. Besides, you draw a salary. Salary? Oh, that's hardly enough. There are men who support families and what you fritter away. Aunt Sarah Jean, I try. You have no concept of thrift, isn't that a fact? <sighs> yeah. I suppose girls do demand more today. Yes, yes, they do. Demand more and get less. She opened her handbag, or her reticule, as she liked to call it, withdrew a key ring, and then she went to the oil painting on the wall, a portrait of my father and of my Uncle Marius. She pushed it aside to reveal a hidden safe, and with one of the keys, she opened the steel door. Inside, I knew, was a small hoard of bills. She selected ten tens, quickly closed the door, and straightened the picture. With an imperial gesture, she handed me the money as if she were giving me an emperor's ransom. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars! Did she know how long a hundred dollars lasted me? Daddy, honey. Yeah, Foss. Give me a hundred dollars. I just gave you a hundred dollars. Oh, isn't that the craziest wheel? I bet red and it comes up black and bursts of ice. <laughs> or is it the other way around? Yeah. I don't have any more money. You don't have any more money? Not with me. Well, go see Rember. That's what it's for. No, that's, that, that's, that's not a good idea. It's a great idea. Oh, Daddy. Baby. Oh, all right. All right, all right, this one time. Come in. Oh, that is Muffet. Have a chair. Thank you, Rembert. Drink? No, no, thank you. What can I do for you, Ted? I need some money. You got it. Just fill in the figure here and sign your name. You know, it, um... It, it occurs to me that I... That uh, uh, you're running up quite a tab, is that it? Now that you mention it, yeah. One day, everything your aunt owns will be yours. Yeah, but still... You're borrowing thousands. You'll be getting millions. Isn't that true? I... Yeah. Well, where's the risk? Well, there really isn't any, but... Your it... aunt isn't going to live forever, is she? Well, I, I hope not. So, if I'm not worried, why are you? Well, I'm not really worried. Eat, drink, and be merry. Know what I mean? Yes, Rembert. <laughs> a thousand bucks hold you for tonight? I already lost a thousand at the poker table. Well, take a few more and go back there and teach him a lesson. I may be revealing more about myself than I intend. You know that I like to wager various sums on cards. And and I can tell you to include horses and various other situations. <clears throat> now, you're also aware of um, Flossie. Flossie Carey, who dances at Rembert's nightclub. Uh, Flossie has certain charms that uh, enchant me. But I, I could never think of her seriously. I, nor, indeed, is she the sort that I could bring home to Aunt Sarah Jean. Good morning, Aunt Sarah Jean. You have a luncheon date? I do? Yes. With with whom? With your future wife. My 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 future wife? Pass the cream, please. Yeah, but Aunt Sarah Jean. Do you know uh Miss Winona Caldwell? No. And you will. Is she to be my future wife, as you call it? I told you the other day to find yourself a sensible girl who's able to bear children, didn't I? Yes. Mm. Such an elementary thing. But beyond you. So, therefore, I arranged it for you. Well, shouldn't I have something to say? What is that to be said? The whole business is overrated. In the long run, one girl's as good as the next. Still, a person should have the right to choose. Well, most people choose wrong. 
Do you know how many unhappy marriages there are? Who, who is this girl? Oh, well, yes, yes. I went. I had occasion to visit my attorney yesterday. She happens to be Mr. Clutter's secretary. A secretary? Mm, very competent. Very quiet. Efficient. The moment I saw her, I said to myself, perfect for Thaddeus. But how do you know I like her? Oh, you'll learn to like her in time. When people live their lives together, they either get to love each other or kill each other. I'm hoping for the best. Now, now Aunt Sarah Jean, I refuse to accept you're your... You're meeting her at Farrell's Steakhouse. You realize you're trying to run my life for me? Of course. But only because you aren't capable of running it yourself. Well, I have no intention of marrying this... this... Miss whatever her name is. Oh, don't pretend you forgot it. Miss Winona Caldwell. <sighs> Winona Caldwell. I can't just imagine... She was sitting at a small table in Farrell's. Well, she wasn't as bad looking as I'd feared. But then neither was she as good looking as I might have hoped. Somewhere in between. Average. Kind of girl you'd be stuck with on a blind date in college. Well, no, 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 no. To be fair, she was a step above that. But not much more. I, uh, Miss Winona Caldwell? And you're Mr. Thaddeus Muffet. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Miss Caldwell, I confess that I am <laughs> just as embarrassed as you are. Oh, but I'm not embarrassed at all. Oh? Each of us is 35 years old. I wanted to be married, but no one ever asked me. You could have asked anyone, but you never wanted to be married. I suppose that's right. Do you want to marry me, Mr. Muffet? Well, we don't know each other, Miss, uh, 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 Miss Caldwell. Well, people only know each other afterwards. And many times, not even then. Do you want to marry me? Why not? Why not? Really? Mr. Muffet, we will never be able to have a frank conversation if you pretend to be shocked every time I open my mouth. Yes, but... I have faced reality, Mr. Muffet. There are increasingly more women in this world than men. I am no longer 18 or even 25 or 35, for that matter. I have to take what I can get. Even me? I could do worse. You're not bad looking. You're wealthy. Thank you. Is that all? Doesn't there have to be anything else? Anything else will have to come later, if it ever does. And if it doesn't, we'll just have one of those nondescript marriages, like so many other people do. And you'd settle for that? Yes. Why? It's better than being alone. You could do a lot worse, too. Could I? Yes. A girl, uh, I should say a woman like me, should be taken seriously. Why? Because I can be of great help to you. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find a woman who can be of help. I agree. Helpful women are no rare commodity. But, uh, no other woman can help you in exactly the same way I can. Why do you say that? Because I know precisely the kind of help you need. I'm not sure I know what you mean. I I'm not even sure I, I need any help at all. Oh, you need all kinds of help. First, you have to be made aware of your problems. I have a problem. Oh, rest assured you do. Once you become aware of it, you'll need help in finding and, uh following through the solution. I really don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's why I'm so important to you. Believe me, there's one thing that you must do within the next uh, six or eight weeks. And yeah, what's that? Well, that is, we must do it. Yeah. What is it? We must uh, murder your aunt. I admit we live in accelerated times. Men and women no longer respect the formalities. It's possible two people meet and decide to marry on the very first date. But to discuss murder at the very first meeting? What's the world coming to? Well, to the second act in just a few moments.
If you were having lunch at Farrell's Steakhouse on this particular Thursday, you might have noticed a couple sitting near the window. Though why you should have bothered, I cannot say. They were rather nondescript. He was balding, somewhat chubby. She was slender, brown-haired, and just somewhat mousy. They were engaged in earnest conversation. Never in a million years would you dream that they were discussing murder. Why, uh... Why do you say we have to murder my aunt? Interesting reaction. What? You're not outraged or shocked. You're not even surprised. You were probably even thinking of doing it yourself. That isn't true. But since we're going to be married... It seems that you're taking quite a bit for granted. We must always be truthful with each other. Otherwise, life will be impossible. Well, why do you say we have to kill my aunt? Do you have any objections? Ethically, morally? Well... Well, practically, then. I suppose you're afraid of getting caught. It's a legitimate attitude. We'll worry about that down the road. You still haven't told me why. Well, to begin, you have no choice. Do you know how much money your aunt has? Six, seven, eight million dollars? Mm-hmm, close enough. Do you know how much you'll inherit? Well, all of it. All of it. Well, there'll be some money here and there deducted for some pet causes. Mm-hmm. And, and, and some of her servants. But the vast bulk of it goes to me. No. No? How can you say no? Because I am employed by Mr. Carl Philip Clutter, your aunt's attorney. Yeah, but I've seen a copy of Aunt Sarah Jean's will. The current will. Another will is to be prepared soon. Another will? Mm Mm-hmm. Your aunt, it seems, is convinced you will fritter away the family fortune. Therefore, she proposes to endow several extremely worthy charitable causes. Well, that can't be true. She will leave you a small trust fund. I don't believe it. A very modest trust fund. She can't do this for me. I say modest. Meager would be more accurate. How, How meager? Even meager is a relative term. Say enough to yield some... uh, $25,000 $25,000 a year. What? Why is she doing this to me? She wants the Muffet name to go down in history. Therefore, the Muffet Charitable Foundation will come into being. But she doesn't care about charity. No, many rich people don't. But it buys immortality. And I have to pay for it? No. That's the purpose of this discussion. You cannot afford to give up the bulk of the inheritance. How do you know all this? <laughs> When I decide to marry a man, I find out things. I don't know what to do. I told you what to do. Kill your aunt before she makes out the new will. Yes, but... Look, you have already borrowed more than you could ever repay from the income of the trust fund she'd set up. When Mr. Rembert finds out... Well, you know about he'll him. He'll want his money now. I don't have it. And what's worse, you won't have it later either. So... He'll go to your aunt. He can't do that. She'll either pay him or she won't. In either case, she'll become so enraged she will cut you off without a cent. And if she refuses to pay him, Mr. Uh, Rembert will come after you. Killing me won't get him his money. No. (laughs) But it will get him his money's worth. You see, he probably has other slow payers or would-be non-payers. If you were to leave this world slowly and uh, painfully, it would discourage others from arbitrarily canceling their debts. We have to do something. I agree. I've even spelled it out. But, But murder? Have you a better idea? I didn't even have one that was as good. But murder. To dispatch another human being into eternity. That was something to give one pause. Well, the days went by. And, of course, Aunt Sarah Jean was completely taken with Winona. Lovely young lady. So sweet. So quiet. Don't you agree? Oh, yes, yes, of course. So virginal in appearance. Oh, gentle. Well, you are indeed fortunate, Thaddeus. Yes, I keep telling myself. So kind and so loving. 
so incapable of doing even the slightest harm to anyone. Of course, of course. I don't believe I have ever seen such warmth. When I wasn't listening to this ludicrous old lady chiming the bells in praise of Winona, I had Winona herself harassing me, hurrying me. In less than a month now, the Muppet Charitable Foundation will be chartered, and then your aunt will be ready to change her will. I know. Well? I don't know how to do it. I have told you how a hundred times. I don't think it could work. Why not? Because you're scared? All right, I admit it. A second. Just one second. That's all it takes to pull the trigger, and it's over. No. It isn't as if you don't want to do it. The police. Yes, yes. What about the police? Look, in all of these cases, they look for someone with a motive. I have got one. I am the only heir. I inherit all of it. But she'll have been killed by a prowler. Saturday night, the cook, the maid, the chauffeur are off. She's alone in the house, some trigger-happy thief. The police aren't fools. I never said they were. They'll think I did it and made it look like the work of a prowler. You can prove you weren't there. You were at my place. When the fatal shot was fired, we were in my apartment. I live a good 35 miles away. You have an alibi. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Do you have a better idea? Once again, she asked the question. And the answer was no. Something had to be done. It was getting closer and closer to D-Day. D standing for disinherit, which for all practical purposes, Aunt Sarah Jean proposed to do to me. So I made a few, I guess you could call them ritualistic objections. But the thing, the deed, the act, whatever you'd call it, would have to be done. It has to be tonight. Tonight? We agreed. The first rainy, foggy Saturday night. <sighs> All right. This is the gun. It's a thirty-two. It'll do the job. Oh, let, 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 let's wait. For what? Nothing can go wrong. It's now five o'clock. The servants have just left for the evening. Well, no, I... The weather bureau says this rain will keep up all night. It'll even get worse. So much the better. You leave here at eight. Go cross town. You'll take the interstate. Get off at exit 27. Get there at about nine. Park the car in the shopping center just down the road. No one will notice it. It's a five-minute walk. The road is deserted. Yes, well, no. No one will see you. Let yourself into the house. Quietly. And that's when you will... Don't say it. All right. I won't say it. As long as you do it. Listen, one all right. You have to get rid of the gun. Now, when you're on the bridge, just toss it over the side. It's deep water. No one will ever look for it. And it'll sink into the mud. No one will ever find it. Are you listening? Uh, yeah. Get back here. It'll be before ten. And I'll swear you were here all night. Well, what are you standing there for? What are you thinking about? What am I thinking about? I'm thinking... I'm not a murderer. I can't go through with it. Mm. Well, it would have been nice to be married. You're not my idea of heaven, and I know I'm not yours. But each of us is the best the other could get. Look, maybe I could get Aunt Sarah Jean to change her mind. About what? About changing the will. No. She's had a glimpse of immortality. The Sarah Jean Moffat Foundation. Beautiful pictures of Sarah Jean Moffat herself, the angel of mercy, lending a warm, generous, helping hand to all who are in need. Oh, especially the children. Oh, those big-eyed little children. You can't hope to fight that, Thaddeus. I can't kill her. I can't. It's up to you. Uh, oh. And who can this be? Hello? Is, uh, is uh, Thaddeus Moffat there? Uh, who's calling, please? Mr. Rambert. Oh, uh, just a moment. Rambert. It's for you. I, I, I... Sooner or later, you'll have to talk to uh, him. Ah, uh, hello, hello, Rembert. That is, I uh, heard a rumor. Uh, a rumor? A 
Grant is changing her will. Oh, oh, that. Is it true? I've got a position in this thing. Yes, you have. You most certainly have. I've got to protect that position. Do I? Or don't I have something to worry about? You have nothing to worry about. I hope so, Thaddeus. For your sake. Take my word for it. Everything will be all right. That's what I want to hear. Good night, Thaddeus. Yeah. Good night, Rembrandt. The gun is fully loaded. I'm sure you know how to use it. I want to go on record with one basic fact, Winona. This thing I'm about to do goes against my moral fiber. I disapprove of it completely. It's just that I have no choice. I agree with you. Completely. It was all Aunt Sarah Jean's fault. I mean, what right did she have to deprive me of that money? It was my father's. He was the brainy brother. I mean, her husband, Mary, is just tagged along. It was my father's genius that created all that wealth. My father's uncanny ability to find the oil, the black gold. He would want me to have the money. Would he be angry at my gambling? Well, what was he? The biggest gambler of all. He gambled on striking oil every day in his life. Who is this aunt of mine to rob me of what is truly mine? I have the right, I have the, the, the obligation to protect my substance, my property. And I will. You have the weather on your side. Everything is in your favor. Do it quickly and come back quickly. And we're on easy street for the rest of our lives. I drove across town. I got on the interstate. I made great time. Got off at exit 27. I parked in the darkest corner of the deserted shopping center. Not a soul saw me. I walked up the road to the house. Unlocked the door. Quietly, I walked into the house. And now for the latest headlines. She was watching TV. The market closed higher today as the dollar rallied on virtually every foreign exchange. She'd never even seen me. It's exactly one hour from now. The president will speak to the nation from the Oval Office. If I could see my aunt from the doorway. She, she, she seemed to be sitting very still. Unnaturally still. And then I noticed the little blue black hole in her forehead. She'd been shot. She was dead. I hadn't killed her. But she was dead. He came there to kill her. But she's already been murdered. And so it would seem he's off the hook. Or is he? After all, he may not have done the deed, but he did have the desire. How do we apportion the guilt, if any, in this sort of situation? That's why we have third acts, to resolve all these dramatic and ethical problems. Take your contact, take it now. Give your cold to contact. I'm going to change your mind about nighttime cold medicine. You see, of all major medicines, only one works up to 12 hours against the cloggy virus symptoms that keep you awake. Only contact. One capsule's relief stays with you all through a long night's sleep, no matter what cold virus attacks. Only contact. Keep your cold to contact. Take only as directed. The unexpected always happens, said the Roman playwright Plautus. And this was more than 2,000 years ago. Maybe the unexpected doesn't always happen. But when it does, it can certainly upset quite a few apple carts. Here, Mr. Thaddeus Moffat has primed himself, nerved himself, steeled himself to commit a murder. Now he suddenly discovers it's all been done for him. Hello? 
Winona. Uh, what is it? But why are you calling? She, she's dead. Uh, certainly. Yeah, but I, but I didn't do it. What are you saying? I didn't kill her. Where are you? I'm at the house. Yes. She, she was dead when I got here. Dead? How? Shot. By whom? I don't know. Dad, listen. Get out of there. Don't do anything. All right. Don't touch anything. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I mean it. Just get out quickly. Okay. Get back here. Fast. Winona. Winona. What? I was going to get out of there. And then I remembered... In her handbag was the key to the hidden safe on the wall. I knew I shouldn't take anything, but there was all that money. I, I, I couldn't help it. And, and how long would it take? It took less than a minute. Inside was a heap of bills. Small ones, big ones. I stuffed them all into my pocket. It was a small fortune. I closed the safe. I straightened the picture. Placed the key back in her handbag. I moved quickly out of the house, back to the parking lot. I know no one saw me. I was about to get on the interstate at exit 27 when it happened. A tire! I managed to get over to the side. And now what? Would you believe I had never changed a tire in my life? But if I call the association or some service station for help... No, that's too risky. What was I to do? And then... Hey, you got trouble there, pal? Uh, I... Well, see for yourself, Joe. The man's got a flat tire. Oh, yeah. Hey, you want a hand? Oh, poor guy. He looks a little shocked. Maybe he was hurt. Hey, buddy, you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Joey, give him a hand. Hey, let me help you with that. You got a spare? Uh, sp spare, yeah, yeah, I think so. I hope it's got air in it. You'd be surprised how many people never check. He took complete command. He opened the trunk, took out the spare, approved it, jacked up the car, removed the wheel, replaced it with the other. It all went swiftly, smoothly. But he and the girl with him, the petite little blonde... They could be witnesses. They could destroy my alibi. My hand tightened on the revolver in my pocket. If I was smart, I, I'd shoot them both. Who would see? Who would know? I guess you're from around here, huh? Oh, yeah, I see by your plate you are. Oh, we're from the Northwest, Oregon. Oh. Yeah, drove cross-country on our honeymoon. And now we're headed back. We each got our jobs to report to. But drop the flat off at your garage. I think you must have picked up a nail somewhere. I looked at his pleasant, boyish face. How could he connect me with anything? A local news item, that's all this would be. He'd be all the way across the country. He didn't know my name. In the dark, he didn't even get a good look at my face. I relaxed my grip on the gun. Instead, I, uh, I felt for a dollar bill... I pressed it between my thumb and forefinger. I held it out to him. Oh, no, no. Please. I didn't do it for the money. Oh, no, this isn't money. I just want to buy you and your wife a cup of coffee. Here, here, just, just take it. And thanks very much. I realized I was talking too much. I could be dangerous. I pressed the money into his hand. Quickly, I got into the car... And I got out of there as fast as I could. And I realized too fast would be bad. No point being picked up by a cop. But nothing happened. Soon, I was back at Winona's place. Who could have killed her? Did the place look upset? What? Well, now that you mention it, 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 it did a little. That's your answer. What answer? A prowler. A prowler? A burglar, a thief. But, but how? There are prowlers, thieves. But tonight? Any night. Well, then, then it was a, a, a coincidence. It could have been. I mean, we wanted to make it look as if a prowler... Had... And a prowler actually did it. I can't believe it. It happened, didn't it? 
Yeah, I guess it did. He may have been young, nervous, or almost anything. And he shot her. Maybe she, uh, maybe she wouldn't show him where she kept her money. Yep, 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 that's right. Well, that's, that's all over. What's important is your alibi. Yeah. Now, you were here. That's our story. I still can't believe it happened that way. Would you rather believe something else? Something else? Yes. That you killed her? No, I told you what happened. It's true. Is it? You could have shot her. What are you trying to do? And after it happened, you couldn't face it. But I didn't. So, you tried to put it out of your mind. That isn't what happened. So, you made up this story. What story? That she was dead when you got there. No! Let's look at that gun. See if it's been fired. The gun? Yes. That should prove something. Look, I don't have the gun. You don't? I threw it away. Where? Where you told me, into the river. Oh, I see. Well, now I guess we'll never know. I'm telling you how it happened. Let's make sure we're prepared for anything. I didn't kill her. You, uh, you didn't touch anything in the house? Killing goes against all my instincts. You didn't touch anything in the house, now, did you? Well, I, I, I... You, 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 you what? <sighs> I emptied the wall safe. But I told you not. Well, it's a secret safe. Only she and I knew about it. Why couldn't you have listened? I, I put the key back in her bag. Who's to know? <sighs> all right. Your alibi. You were here all night. Yeah. That's our story. We stay with it. Right. And nobody can say you weren't. Right? Right. Because nobody saw you. Right? Well, did anybody see you? Getting on at 27, I had a, a, a flat tire. Oh, no. Yeah, and this, this young couple drove by, and they stopped. They saw you? The fella changed the tire for me. He, he could identify you. Uh, he's headed out for Oregon someplace. But he could identify well, you. Well, it was dark. It was foggy. I was wearing a hat. He doesn't know your name. No. Or anything about you? No. All right. All right. Let's think this out. If he reads in the paper that a Mrs. Sarah Jean Moffat was killed by a burglar, it would mean nothing to him. That's right. If, by some thousand to one shot, there's a picture of you in the paper as the heir to the Moffat fortune, and he sees it, I know, I know, shave off your mustache right now. It'll make you look completely different. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Now, where are we? It would have been better if you didn't empty the safe, if you hadn't had a flat tire, if this fellow hadn't helped you. But the fact is, I don't think any of it can hurt us. Are you sure? I'm positive. The alibi holds. You were with me all night. We're in the clear. Hey, there's a stop, Mary. Let's get some coffee. Oh, the budget's low, Joey. Well, just coffee, Ann. What can it cost? It's just a little thing. Huh. You break the budget with a little thing here, a little thing there, and Oh, besides, you... the gentleman's paying for it. The gentleman? Well, I fixed his tire. He gave me a buck. You took money? Oh, look, he made me do it. But you shouldn't have. Listen, he was going to make an issue out but of it. Still, you he know... said, let me treat you and the wife to coffee. Well... We'll pull into this place. Here. You put this dollar with the rest of the money. All right. Let's go. Joe? What's the matter? Close the door. What's up? Close the door. You said that he gave you a dollar? Yeah. Why did you say that? Well, he handed me this bill, so naturally I assumed that he gave... Look, Joe... Oh, no. It's a hundred dollar bill. It can't be. It is. Look. There's Ben Franklin smiling at us. A hundred bucks. Why would he give me a hundred bucks? He didn't mean to, Joey. It was a mistake. You think so? Well, you saw how nervous he seemed? Sort of in a daze? But I, I don't know what we can do about it. I do. We can give it back. Give it back? Well, it's the honest thing to do. Yeah, but how... Joey, look, we're starting out on our married life. I know, but how... The things we do now will kind of set the pattern. Yes, Mary, I, I, I understand. And we're both honest people. Now, look, honey, don't be... I, I'm only trying to ask how. We don't even know who he is. Well, we have to make every attempt to find him, and then, and only then, if, if we can't, we can keep it. 
now that I said that, I really don't know how to go about it. Uh, I do. Yes, Joe? I was getting the spare out the trunk. I saw the plate. What made you remember it? Well, because it was five. Fifty-five, fifty-five. I said to myself, what a number if you're playing auto poker. Oh, Joe. See that sign? State police? Uh Uh-huh. We'll stop there. Tell them the story. The man made a mistake. They can trace him in a minute. Oh, they must have that computer license thing out here. Joe, I never knew how much I loved you till just this minute. It's 11 o'clock. Would it be on the news? Well, only if one of the servants came home and discovered the body. Yeah, I suppose so. You mustn't be nervous. You have an alibi. You were here between eight and nine. You were here all night. You're in the clear. No, I, I know that. But but let, let's listen to the news anyhow. All right. Hello, this is Sal Gallo with the news. There's so much evil in the world. Let's begin with something good, something heartwarming. Mr. Thaddeus Buffett, if you are listening... You're going to get your hundred dollars back. What did he say? Be quiet. Yes, at exactly 8.15 this evening, you were at exit 27 what? of the interstate. What? He knows. How? You had a flat tire. Joe and Mary Parker from Apple Valley, Oregon, passed by. Joe fixed it for you. He must have been there. You wanted to tip him? By mistake, you gave him a one hundred dollar bill. The safe. Your aunt's safe. Joe Parker happily recalled your license number and reported it to the state police. You gave him a hundred dollar bill. It was dark. I couldn't see. If you hadn't taken it from the safe. If you're listening, Mr. Thaddeus Muffet, Sergeant Barrow is on his way to your home to return the bill right now. Yes, the state police sergeant was on his way to Thad's home, which was also his aunt's home, to return the $100 bill. Also, most likely to discover the body and set in motion a train of events, the climax of which placed Thaddeus in jail. After all, he had the motive.